Hey folks, Matt from artoftheimage.com. Got a great reader question today, which brings up a really great topic to talk about, and that is APS-C versus Micro Four Thirds. So when we say APS-C, we're talking about APS-C DX sensors. Those are crop sensors, 1.5 times, something like the Canon T3i, the Canon 70D, the Canon 70, Nikon D 3300, 3200, 5200, 7100, 7000, all those what we call crop sensors. And then Micro Four Thirds, we've got in our, our Olympuses and our Panasonics basically. So we're looking at uh, you know the new OMD EM1, the EM10, Panasonic GH3, GH4, the Panasonic GX7, and the rest of the Panasonic and uh, Olympus Micro Four Thirds lineup. So our question comes from Anti Capitalist X. Cool YouTube name. Uh, a lot of photography people get fixated and hung up on sensor size. Do you think a camera with an APS-C sensor can produce better quality images than a camera that has a micro four thirds sensor when everything else being equal? So, good question because a lot of people would automatically say no. And what I want to show is that there's really no difference between a APS-C DX sensor and a Micro Four Thirds sensor as far as what it should be able to deliver. The reason for this is that current APS-C DX sensors, 24 megapixels, for instance, in the D5200 that I'm filming this with right, right now. Micro Four Thirds, 16 megapixels. When we look at pixel density, that's how many pixels get crammed into a certain size, you'll find that 24 megapixels on a crop sensor, you know, DX, APS-C, is pretty much equivalent to 16 megapixels on a micro four thirds. In other words, if you're gonna cut out, this is how they make sensors, they take a big sheet of, of sensor wafer and they cut out as many as they can on that sheet of sensors to put in the digital cameras they're gonna make. So the micro four thirds ones are a little smaller, but they're only 16 megapixels. So there's less density of megapixels, even though it's a smaller size. The APS-C DX sensor is a little bigger in terms of pure um, size, like millimeters, but there is a higher density on there of megapixels, so 24. So I went over to a, Googled it and found the actual dimensions here without having to look them up in one of my manuals. And what we've got is APS-C or DX, this is the listing for APS-C, um, DX is Nikon's version, APS-C is what Canon would call it. They're, they're virtually identical, but APS-C is 23.1 millimeters by 15.4. So when we multiply these together, we get 355.74. So that's our area, right? So if you divide that by 24 megapixels, which is what you know a current up-to-date sensor is, most of them anyways, um, we get 14.8225. So let's say... 15 for sake of argument. Now, micro four thirds is 18 millimeters by 13.5 millimeters. So when we multiply that, we get 243 as our area. So let's take the 243, divide it by the 16 megapixels, which is the standard right now for micro four thirds. That's what my EM10 is, that's what the EM1 is, that's what the GH4, the GH3, the GX7. We get 15.1875. Sound familiar? We round that off, we've got 15. So they're both 15. So what I'm saying here is that other than in terms of absolute resolution, because obviously the APS-C, the DX has more resolution. So that is a point in favor. Like for absolute resolution, you're talking 24 megapixels. Micro Four Thirds is 16. But when you look at, yes, the Micro Four Thirds is a smaller sensor, but its pixel density is 15 when you do that math. When you look at the APS-C sensor, yes, it's a little larger sensor, but you're cramming more megapixels in there, 24 in this case. So pixel density is 15. So all else being equal here, they should basically be able to provide the same type of results. Um, other than pure resolution, we're talking about high ISO performance, dynamic range, color depth, all that type of thing. You should be able to get the same type of quality images out of either APS-C or uh, Micro Four Thirds. Now that's, we're comparing the 24 megapixels crop sensor 
and the 16 megapixels micro four thirds. So, I mean, obviously, if you move, if you were comparing a different megapixel sensor, these numbers would change. But uh, so the answer to the question here, to anti-capitalist question, is then that yes, you should be able to get as good a image from micro four thirds as you do from a crop sensor, an APS-C or a DX sensor. And um, I have to say that's what I see in shooting these cameras. Um, my EM10, beautiful images, very clean at high ISO. St I, I never, previous generations, I would not have wanted to shoot at a higher ISO like 3200 or 6400. These are usable now and, and quite nice even at 3200 from the latest generation of Micro Four Thirds sensors. And that's about where I would want to stop on the latest generation of APS-C. That's the 24 megapixel sensors, like what's in the 5200 or the 5300 that I have here for review, um, or the 7100. Um, and this would be roughly equivalent to um, the 20 megapixel sensors that you find in the Canons, um, like in the 7D, the 70D, the T3i. You would think that doing the math, that the Canon sensor being a little bit less density uh, of megapixels, being a 20 megapixel, that then the math would, would benefit it over the micro four thirds. And if you do the math, it will slightly. But the Canon sensors are older generation sensors and they don't perform as well as the latest generation DX, the 24 megapixel sensors, or the latest generation micro four thirds of this, the, the current 16 megapixel ones. And you'll find that out if you go and look at any of the sensor reviews. I mean, the uh, the current DX sensors are smoking the older APS-C Canon sensors that Canon is still using. And I mean, they're due for an update. That should, that'll probably change with the next round of cameras. But what I'm saying there then is that even though the math might bear it out because it's an older generation of sensors, um, you're going to find the APS-C, DX, and Micro Four Thirds pretty much level across the board. So, you know, 24 megapixel DX, all the new Sony sensors that are in the Sonys, that are in the Nikons, 20 megapixels, that it's in, those are the older sensors that are still in the latest cameras from Canon, and then the current generation of Micro Four Thirds sensors, which are excellent, that's the 16 megapixel ones, you're gonna be able to get the same image quality out of all of them. So, a little bit of math there to explain my answer, because I'm sure people will be like, oh no, that can't be possible. But when you look at the math, it is. And bearing in mind, like I pointed out with the Canon stuff, you're looking at an older generation sensor. So pretty much right across the board here, we're talking about fairly equivalent terms, other than, as I pointed out, pure resolution so there you go folks what do you think um for those of you that are shooting micro four thirds and shooting crop sensor bodies i think you will have already seen this let me know in the comments below do you agree with me do you disagree with me um do you think the math doesn't work because <laughs> it's kind of hard to dispute the math i just ran it a couple times and it's pretty basic right um anyways comments let's have a discussion micro thir four thirds versus apsc dx crop sensors and um any questions let me know too in the comments we'll be back soon with some new videos some new articles we'll keep up to date with what's going on in the world of photography videography and technology right here at artoftheimage.com thanks a lot folks